All right, hello everybody. How y'all doing? Got it? Yeah. So uh, it's great to be here. Um, my name's Stuart. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Cadena. And today we're talking about parallel processing and execution on the EVM. So, so I'm from Cadena. Cadena is a uh, proof of work layer one blockchain that offers a unique architecture uh, with parallel chains for scalability. And I'll be telling you all about that uh, in our talk today. But uh, historically, we never had EVM chains. So what we're talking about now is a, is a new way to scale applications for EVM technology. Um, a little bit about me, I've been in technology uh, since the 90s, started at Apple, uh, came to New York, got into fintech, uh, trading tech and sp uh, specifically, ended up at JP Morgan, uh, was one of the founding directors of JP Morgan's blockchain group in the early 2010s, before uh, where I met my co-founder, Will Martino, and we uh, founded Cadena coming out of JP Morgan in 2016. So today, uh, we're going to talk about a topic that everyone talks about a lot, which is you know, how to scale EVM technologies. This is kind of the main problem people are dealing with in most respects. So, um, so the main approach for scaling an EVM, as everyone knows, is layer two, uh, or layer three. And, uh, so before we uh, jump into it, one thing I, I want to point out is that in software engineering, scaling means you have resources that you can throw at a problem when load gets too high. Ideally, it's a uniform resource. So for instance, on AWS, that might be more RAM, more GPUs, more, uh, more compute. And no matter how much load you get, there's always more you can grab. Um, so whereas with L2, uh, that you know, to, there's a lot to like there because there's certainly an almost, I mean, there's, there's a limit on how much can be uh, cleared on Ethereum, but that number is going up over time. So there's a lot to like. However, there, we are losing something with layer twos, and so let's talk about that. Um, so most layer twos have, you know, basically this uh, structure, radically simplified, of course which is you have the layer two, you have the, uh, something called a sequencer, which is the kind of critical bit that makes it possible for transactions to be, uh, you know, to execute and then record on the layer one, which is usually Ethereum. Um, so let, let's see how that's going. So, one, so while layer twos give you more throughput, uh, finality has quite a bit of latency if you want these to show up back on the main chain. It can take as much as a week. Um, settling back to the chain can involve significant gas price. Um, sometimes, just depending on how many uh, roll-ups are settling at the time you settle back. And actually, many L2s are also uh, hitting their limits as well. Uh, because most of them are very similar architecturally to Ethereum, which means they're, they can only do as many transactions as, as they have a hard limit. And once you hit that, gas prices go up on the layer two as well. Um, but perhaps the most concerning thing is the sequencer technology itself, which is inherently centralized. Uh, it's, you know, blockchain, it, taking a step back, blockchain was built on proven technologies. Uh, the, Bitcoin white paper introduced no new technologies that just put things together in a novel way. Uh, same with the V1 of Ethereum. So when people talk about decentralized sequencers, this is technology that does not exist yet. So, and it's possibly not even solvable. Um, so another issue is the use of optimistic protocols uh, in layer two. Um, which basically assume that when things get back to the base chain, there won't be conflicts uh, for a given account. Um, if there is a conflict, uh, this can lead to delays because you have to retry and wait. And so there's, there's a fundamental kind of state management problem with layer twos that, uh, you know, there's a happy path and lots of, you know, things like NFTs and things like that can go down the happy path, but there is this 
way that it can slow, also get slowed up. Um, and under load, this only gets worse. Um, these conflicts become more frequent and can cause uh, repeated rollbacks. Um, and just a quick sidebar is that some layer twos are now offering parallel execution. So that's interesting in the sense that they uh, overcome the problems we were discussing earlier, where layer twos uh, can have gas spikes of their own. So there's faster processing, uh, more capacity. However, uh, the state contention problem doesn't go away, and arguably it gets worse because you have the potential for many more uh, conflicts to occur once you get back to the base layer one. So what we're introducing with EVM technologies based on our architecture that at Cadena, we've been running since 2020. So I want to introduce you to ChainWeb and uh, so you can understand how our proof of work multi-chain technology works. Uh, go back to the graphic. Oh, no graphic? Okay. <laughs> uh, what's next? Yeah, okay. So this gives you an idea of uh, the architecture of ChainWeb. And, you know, so what we have here is our native uh, application layer, which is called Pact. Um, uh, we launched with 10 of these. A year later, we scaled to 20. Um, and so EVM is our current new effort, and we have a big announcement today, so it's good you're here. Uh, and that's going to have a similar architecture. And this is all one network, one consensus that manages all these chains. Uh, next slide. Yeah. So, um, so multiple chains means that there's no single queue. So this is great for transactions getting into the network and being processed. Um, it also means that uh, there's, uh, you know, since we're talking about 20 chains in PACT and many EVM chains coming to our network, uh, this is also a solution for gas because um, you can scale across different chains and avoid congestion that way. Uh, generally speaking, on our network, we have gas prices in the fractions of a penny. Um, the other thing about our architecture that's unique is that you can keep adding chains, and I'll explain a little later why that's true. But every time we add chains, uh, the throughput uh, goes up linearly for that amount. So, for instance, when we went from 10 to 20 chains, uh, our throughput doubled. Um, so a word about our consensus. Our consensus is based on proof of work. And again, we'll get to some of the details about that in a second. Uh, but the, the notes here, the kind of headline is that um, the proof of work is still the most secure and the most decentralized consensus technology out there. Uh, and so we use the security that you know, secures Bitcoin for uh, truly decentralized tamper resistant validation, but with high throughput. Um, it eliminates the need for sequencers because uh, you just submit to the various mempools um, and, you know, and, and you enjoy the security that comes from having thousands of uh, unpermissioned miners uh, mining the network. Finally, uh, it's a much simpler architecture. There's no middlemen or anything like that. So this reduces the attack surface for, uh, you know, for exploits and it, it's a far more secure architecture. So from the uh, application point of view and protocols point of view, um, uh, ChainWeb uses, uh, the ChainWeb application layers use a native burn and mint protocol. So a given token actually exists on all chains at the same time, and it means you don't have any kind of liquidity fragmentation. When you move a coin, it just shows up there, and it's, it's like it's a single, uh, it operates as a single token. Um, so no need for bridges, no need for anything custodial when you're scaling things across all these chains. Um, and there's no attack vector there as a result. Um, and for developers, this is all native to the ChainWeb protocol. Uh, you know, so in the EVM side, there's pre-compiles for uh, system contracts for you to use to natively transfer tokens. And uh, so that means any movement you do around the chain doesn't need a special audit or anything like that. It just works. Um, and this is very, uh, next slide, this is very uh, 
good for DeFi and other apps to scale because that means um, since uh, pools, pools therefore can easily scale across chains because you know, tokens operate as a single token. Um, and again, there's no extra trust layer required, so that's, uh, that it, it makes it possible to massively scale uh, DeFi applications, but in a fully decentralized and secure trustless manner. So let's talk a little bit more about ChainWeb before we get into our ChainWeb EVM announcement today. Um, so the idea is that ChainWeb, ChainWeb can grow with adoption and utilization forever. Um, so interestingly enough, this is only possible with proof of work. Proof of work, the amount of work, the, the hash rate, the hash power that you're using can be divided pretty much infinitely um, in, in our architecture. Whereas if you did the same thing with proof of stake, uh, proof of stake is a discrete set of validators. So if you were to split that up onto multiple chains, uh, you would lose security. Chainweb has this kind of bizarre uh, feature, which is that as you add more chains, it actually gets more secure. And when we launched in 2020, uh, we actually had Gauntlet uh, do an agent-based uh, simulation of this and proved that the network actually gets more secure with more chains. So it's more, th but without needing any increase in hash rate. So the same miners mine, but you can add more chains. Um, and then the parallel chains act as oracles of each other's activity under the hood. And that's the reason why, uh, it, that's both the reason why it becomes more resistant to attack and why it's so easy to move assets around the network. Um, so, what are the benefits here? Uh, first, this is very important, this is a proven technology. We launched in 2020, uh, again with 10 chains, uh, expanded to 20, and while it hasn't been a walk in the park, you know, it's a public blockchain out there, it's a you know, very lucrative target for hackers, uh, we're proud to say that we haven't had a single interruption in block production since 2020. So it's a pretty great track record as far as that goes. And it's just to demonstrate that this scaling technology is proven in here today. Um, what does it mean? It means that gas stays cheap uh, because apps scale across chains and, it, and congestion is manageable. So the idea is that it's not like we never have gas spikes. It's just that there's something you can do. So if you deploy your app to a single chain because you're just getting started and then your app does really well, sure you can clog the chain and gas prices go up. But the good news is you can then scale to more chains and, or you can go find a chain that doesn't have as much con uh, congestion on it. You can do load balancing. You have all the tools that uh, other areas of software engineering enjoy. Um, a very important point here is that you don't have to run your own chain. You can, uh, there, this is not an app chain story. This operates as a single, uh, integrated layer one, so you just deploy your app and, sorry, oh, okay. Uh, you just deploy your app and you're ready to go. So, how does this impact you and this, and by you I mean builders and developers and the kind of people at this great conference? Um, it means uh, no more fighting to get into a block, as we said, uh, gas stays manageable, as we said, no need to run your own app chain. And an important point here is that we've been doing this since 2020, so we really understand how there's different ways you can scale and they're gonna be different for every DAP. So talk to us because we're experts in how to use this technology to scale and it's gonna be a little different for each application. So the big announcement uh, today is that we are launching TestNet as of today. It is live and uh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> It's a lot of work. The team really uh, pulled one out for this. We're very excited. Um, so this is the you know this is the big slide here, right? Um, these are all our partners coming on. Um, so this is the great time to get involved because even though we have these partners, it's still early. But you know we have four Dex partners, five wallets, three lending protocols, two bridges, on, on RWA market four AI partners, and we have solutions for stablecoins, GameFi, DPIN, and indexers. So uh, TestNet is here, 
It's going to have a it's going to have a full ecosystem for you to work with. So it's never been a better time to get involved with Cadena. So how can you get involved? Uh, the testnet launches five EVM chains. Uh, we're doing this as an MVP process, so we're steadily adding features to it as we go. But you can deploy today. We've got uh, and. It's important to note here, this is vanilla EVM uh, with Pectra. So you can deploy today, right now, onto our chains. We have the hard hat plugin ready for you to go. Uh, so there's nothing stopping you from lifting and shifting your application over to Cadena. And uh, due to our unique token economics, you know, even though we've been running since 2020, the foundation still has money. So we have a $50 million EVM grant program. So come talk to us. We, we, we have lots of problems we need to solve on this network. It's a great opportunity. Um, and of course, we're here. Uh, please come talk to us at our booth. This QR code takes us, uh, will take you to our uh, testnet portal. Um, from there, you can apply for Magrat, join our developer communities, learn more about our technology, uh, download the dev kit, and get started. Um, we're really excited to be participating in the EVM Ethereum world, and we can't wait to see what you all can do with it. Thanks a lot. <laughs> we time for, uh, uh, if we have time for questions, I think we can take like one or two questions. Just a minute. Wait. I mean, this is a question that I always ask when I hear parallel chains. So how do you do atomic swaps? Between uh, there's no need. It's not based on Atomic Swap. It's based on the original uh, SPV that predates Litecoin. So you just you just mint and burn. Uh, sorry, you just burn and mint. It just shows up on the other chain. Okay. Yeah. So you said because the chains communicate with each other, there's no liquidity um, fra fragmentation. Uh, but uh, how does that look like for, a, let's say, a Uniswap pool? Uh, to have some of, um, balance of some token on all the chains? Do they have to deploy on each of the chains with the same address? There's no need to, so y there's no need to deploy on all chains. You deploy on the, as many chains as your application throughput demands. Um, so, and you can consider uh, different usage, uh, usage approaches. So for instance, you could, um, you know, you could have an alt with various stables on a given chain or something like that. And then there are, uh, there are ways to make uh, liquidity appear instantaneously on other chains, um, but one of the ways is real, it would be custodial, something like, I mean, one of the great things about this is that intents on our network function really well because they clear in like a minute. So, it, you know, so while it's not like instantaneous, instantaneous necessarily for certain operations, um, you can rely on the, you know, you can have an intent and you can, you know, trade across our various chains, but it's, it settles like that. So it's a very unique experience. Thank you for the question. Any other Do questions? Have any question? So no, no more questions. Okay. Thank you very much for speaking. Thanks again.